Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're here in my living room in Bolton Hill rounding out week eight of our five minute history videos and today is Friday and it's the Friday before Memorial Day and we want to say thank you to all of you who served or are serving in the military uh, by focusing on two armories, the 5th Regiment Armory and the uh, Melvin Cade Armory. And let's just jump right in. The 5th Regiment Armory, if uh, with its buttresses and its crenellated roof, uh, if it looks to you like it should be in medieval Europe somewhere uh, with uh, folks firing longbows and, and boiling pots of oil and trebuchets over the walls, um, it could be, but it's not. It's on Howard Street, uh, just at the edge of Bolton Hill. It was built in 1901, um, and the architects for it were a firm called Wyatt and Nolting. Um, if you live in Baltimore County, they also designed the Pikesville Armory, um, and they also designed the Summer Estate for a gentleman named uh, Dr. Howard Kelly. Kelly was one of the big four doctors who helped found uh, the Hopkins School of Medicine and his summer estate called Liriodendron in Bel Air is just spectacular. If you haven't been, um, I encourage you to go when you can. Um, but back to the armory. Um, the armory houses the Maryland National Guard, um, and the Maryland National Guard has really deep roots in Maryland, about as deep as you can get. Um, they started in 1634, and those of you who went to public school in Maryland will know that date. That's when the Ark and the Dove, uh, the two ships, landed in St. Mary, went to St. Mary's City, carrying the first European um, colonists to the new colony of Maryland. And on that ship, there were two military captains. Um, and they pretty uh, quickly formed what they called trained bands. And the trained bands were volunteers uh, who would show up uh, when needed uh, to fight for the colony. Uh, the Maryland National Guard also has another chapter of its storied history is, is uh, with the Maryland 400 during the Revolutionary War. In the Battle of Long Island, the Maryland 400 uh, repeatedly attacked the overwhelming British forces, uh, allowing George Washington to get off of Long Island and escape to the safety of Manhattan, uh, saving the Continental Army and, uh, and maybe saving the Revolution. Our state motto, the old line state, if you don't know, derives from the Maryland uh, 400 in the National Guard. Um, so today it's an uh, Army Guard unit, uh, Army Guard post. Um, so what's inside? Well, the main thing inside is an enormous drill hall. And you may have been inside of it. It for many years uh, was uh, the home of the Saint, uh, Baltimore St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Um, there are also high school, it's so big, there are high school indoor track meets held there. And we did a tour a number of years ago. Up at the top, there's a, in addition to the overwhelming drill hall, there's a diminutive officer's quarters um, where there's a tiny little bar. I think it had maybe four bar stools, uh, but it did have a liquor cabinet. And I think for many years it actually had a bartender, although I don't think it has one anymore. Um, the other uh, really uh, sort of famous thing that happened at the armory was the 1912 Democratic Convention that nominated Woodrow Wilson uh, for the Democratic nominee, who of course went on to become president. If, you're, if you are a political junkie, you'll know this convention as probably one of the more colorful in our nation's history. Uh, Wilson went into it as the underdog. A guy named Champ Clark, who was from Missouri and the Speaker of the House, had more uh, committed delegates, um, and, uh, but he didn't have a majority. And on the ninth ballot, uh, the Tammany Hall machine in New York City threw its weight behind Clark, uh, which gave him a majority. But the rules of the game back then were you, you needed two-thirds, not just a majority, to win the nomination. Um, and so uh, the Tammany Hall move made a gentleman named William Jennings Bryan, if you remember that name from your history, um, he was an unsuccessful candidate for president many times, uh, but he was still the party's uh, leader of the liberal wing of the Democratic Party. Um, and that so upset him, he called Clark the Wall Street candidate, uh, that he started scheming for Woodrow Wilson. And from a house on Mount Royal Terrace, uh, 2100 Mount Royal Terrace, if I remember, it's the, the Wilson bed and breakfast now. But from the porch of that house, uh, uh, Brian made all sorts of deals um, that eventually would get Woodrow Wilson nominated. Wilson at this time had basically given up and was writing his concession speech. But on the 46th ballot, the 46th ballot, he won uh, to the surprise of many, including himself. Um, by the way, the 46th ballot, that was the uh, more time, more ballots required uh, in 1912 to get a nominee than any other political convention except for one. And that happened in 1860, in the years leading up to the uh, Civil War. Um, and that convention, the Democratic Convention, was in Charleston, South Carolina. But it was so contentious, north and south, and took so many ballots that it had to relocate. And where did it relocate to? Well, it relocated to front, the Front Street Theater uh, here in Baltimore. 
and the convention uh, eventually nominated Stephen Douglas for the Democrats, who of course went on to lose to Republican Abraham Lincoln. All right, enough of the Fifth Regiment Armory and conventions. Let's move over to the William, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Melvin Cade Armory in West Baltimore on Winchester Street. Um, it is a building, 1959, um, that was built especially for African American Maryland National Guardsmen. Um, uh, that unit had, traces its roots back to 1879, when a number of former enslaved men and uh, veterans of the Union forces in the Civil War uh, formed what they called the Monumental City Guard. And the Monumental City Guard um, uh, was not recognized for a couple years, but three years later, in 1882, the Maryland National Guard recognized it um, as the first separate company. Uh, the Guard was, in it, was uh, segregated at that point. Um, uh, and, that, and the first separate, se segregate, first separate company, easy for me to say, um, uh, uh, fought met in, uh, did its duty, fought in a number of foreign wars up until 1947 when it turned into the 231st Truck Battalion. And the 231st Truck Battalion um, in 1950 uh, was the only Maryland National Guard unit to be shipped to Korea, the Korean War. Um, and in fact, of all of the National Guard units all over the country, it was the first one to land in combat in Korea. Um, when they got back, they were denied their due ceremony uh, because the Maryland National Guard in the 50s was still segregated. And uh, a number of the gentlemen from uh, the 231st uh, petitioned to desegregate the Guard. Um, they didn't get very far. They had to go to the governor. And after what was several years of lobbying and advocating, um, Governor Theodore McCowden finally um, forced the Guard to, uh, to desegregate. Um, thanks again to the folks at the 231st. Uh, but they still didn't have a home. Um, and it took another four years for the Cade Armory, then called the Winchester Armory, to open. And in fact, the National Guard didn't meet its budget requirements for it. So the 231st folks um, had to fill the gap. They actually sold uh, ceremony, cer ceremonial bricks uh, to raise money for it. So uh, today, the Cade Armory, named after the leader of the unit in Korea, um, and a longtime leader, I believe, um, uh, the Cade Armory, like the 5th Regiment Armory, is a still, still is in active use with the Maryland National Guard. And I will conclude by just saying one more time, thank you to all, you, all of you who have served or are serving. We'll see you next week.